The day Peter Warwick decided to return to Tallahassee for his senior season marked the end of the morning Seminole fans endured for the heartbreaking Fiesta Bowl loss and the beginning of the anticipation of things to come. Today, it's up to the Duke Blue Devils to stop the Heisman Trophy favorite and the number one team in the land as Florida State takes on Duke next. The crowd and the band play on here at Altel Stadium in Jacksonville, Florida. Neutral site, so-called, for today's Atlantic Coast Conference battle. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents Atlantic Coast Conference football. Today, live from Jacksonville, the top-seeded Florida State Seminoles take on the Blue Devils of Duke. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker. And, of course, Bobby Bowden has compiled such a great record in the ACC at 57-2. and two. And now he even admits that this may be his deepest team ever. Well, that's quite a statement because you have to measure everything at Florida State by national championships. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. If they lose one game, it's a major disappointment. He's got quite got a lot of skill, but can they finish the job? That's their challenge. Well, they've got a lot of pressure on him, and nobody has more pressure than the quarterback, Chris Wanky, with all of those weapons he has to work with. Well, he's a captain of the Starship, score a lot. And you look at it, four games, over 1,000 yards, but six TDs and five interceptions, that's an area of concern if there's anything negative about this team. <laughs> and, of course, uh, Duke has a pretty good defense. They've had to play an awful lot and likely will play a lot today. And a guy who'll see a lot of action had a great week last week on the corner, Darius Clinton. 18 tackles. Two tackles for loss, two losses, two interceptions. He's a guy that's got to be a madman. Also got to keep an eye on Peter Warwick. They like to run a lot of crossing routes. He's got to be the guy to drop the hammer on Warwick. Now, if there's going to be any pressure on Chris Wanky, probably the guy to apply it will be Chris Combs. Outstanding defensive tackle for Duke. Well, he's a big stud. A four, tack, four sacks, rather, shy of their all-time record. Kendall Knight's got to come up big. They've got to get some help from other guys. If he's double, somebody else has got to put pressure on Wanky. And Duke has got to produce offensively. And when we come back, Mike Hogwood will address that at the quarterback position as Paul Franks and Bobby Bowden meet at midfield in Jacksonville. Near you by Bank of America. By Domino's Heatwave. Fresh, hot, and delicious Domino's Pizza, how you like it. By Bell South, the official telecommunications company of the ACC. By GEICO Direct, the sensible alternative. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. And by BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Welcome back to Jacksonville. Duke and Florida State about set to kick off. Let's go to the field with the third member of our broadcast crew, Mike Hogwood, to talk about the quarterback situation at Duke. That's right, Steve. You know, as you guys have talked about, a key for Duke today is controlling the football on offense, something they've had problems doing this year. They've got to put the ball in the end zone for touchdowns. Starting at quarterback today will be junior Bobby Campbell. He moved the ball well on a couple of series last week against Vanderbilt. He had some mistakes as well, but they like his size. He's 6'5". He's got a gun for a right arm. And there may be a shot in the arm for Duke's offense today. Spencer Romine has been injured. He's number 14. He practiced all week. Carl Franks told us he threw the ball very, very well on Thursday. I think it's highly probable that we will see him today. By the way, an hour ago, we were basking in Florida sunshine here. Well, there's a big cloud that has settled over Altel Stadium. Temperatures dropped just a little bit. It's a little windy. It's a perfect day for football. The number one team in the nation, the Florida State Seminole set to do battle with Duke. It's coming up next. Get the win this afternoon. Well, first of all, don't feed the fire. We're talking turnovers. Amen. Florida State reacts to turnovers like a shark reacts to blood in the water. Duke cannot afford to give up the football in the first quarter. And Duke has got to get some first downs. Got to move those chains. Got to make uh, your good possessions, keep it alive, and keep your defense off the field. Good measure if they're moving it is if numbers show up in Montgomery and Flowers category. Well, these two guys need to blow up. Combined, 20 receptions, 333 yards, only one touchdown. They've got to step up. Florida State deferred their option. Duke will receive the opening kickoff. 
There's Sebastian Janikowski. 33 kickoffs. 27 have not been returned. Van Ertel, Jack, and Scotty Montgomery are deep, and we are underway in Jacksonville. And this one will roll out of bounds. And Duke will get a rare break, get out to the 40-yard line on the out of bounds, and get a chance to get good field position for that first drive. And, of course, as we told you, Bobby Campbell is going to be coming out at quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils. Campbell on the season. 21 out of 54, 38%. He has one touchdown. He's thrown two interceptions. He's a junior from Hicksville, New York. Nine career touchdown passes. He's got good size, 6'5", 215, and he's got a big job here today. He's at the 35-yard line on the penalty. Richmond Flowers split wide to the left and wide right. Actually, four wide outs here, Doc, in his first uh, possession for Duke. And they'll hand off to Dwayne Epperson, and Epperson is going nowhere. He's grounded there at the 34-yard line. Jerry Johnson on the tackle. Let's take a look at our Geico starting lineup. Scotty Montgomery and Richmond Flowers, the key of this back and receiver set group, because they've got to get some numbers, as we said, Doc. And up front, you know, that is a good point, but Fleming and Lynch, two guys had a lot of pressure on them to contain the tackle of FSU. Second down and 10. And second down, 10 call goes to Epperson again. This time it's for positive yardage out to the 38-yard line. Corey Simon at the heart of that. And uh, that's a good place to start with our defensive lineup. Corey Simon, the Brian Piccolo winner, and an All-American with some great help and with Jerry Johnson and Jamal Reynolds and David Warren. And the linebackers quick as ever again. Bowley Jennings, you look at Allen, they lead the team in tackles. And, and the secondary, great cover guys across the board. Edwards, Gibson, Key, Thomas call their names a lot today. Third down now coming. No score. First possession. And seven yards to go for the first down. His first pass of the day. Campbell in pressure. Throws it. And almost now intercepted. Intercepted by Allen. And he's brought down at the 49-yard line of Duke in a pass that maybe Campbell shouldn't have thrown. Well, there goes so much for the analysis. You can't give the ball up in the first eight minutes. The first possession, third play. They do it. Brian Allen now second in leading the team in tackles, and then he comes up with an interception. Let's take a look at it. Now you watch the eyes. First mistake, telegraphing, and then under pressure. Sometimes it's best to just eat it. And then great athleticism. Once again, a trademark of Mickey Andrews' group on defense. Brian Allen with the interception. That's his first career. Campbell thinks this one over. 13 opportunities. Seven touchdowns. The team's turned over. That's North Carolina last week. They were down by four touchdowns before the first commercial break. Here's Wenke. Throws to the flats, and it is complete to Lavernius Coles. And Coles moves upfield to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 14. Let's go back to our Geico starting lineups. And take a look at the backs and receivers for the Seminoles. Dan Kendra and Travis Miner will get traffic in the backfield. Thomas and Williams are two big tackles. Strong, got good feet. First and ten at the 35-yard line. Wenke. Chris Wenke back at quarterback. Stands in with a short drop. The Coles again complete at the 25. Second straight pass to Lavernius Coles, tackled by Darius Clark. And it's going to be a gain of another 10 yards on the play for Florida State. Lavernius Coles out there with Peter Warwick that time. It's a first down for the Seminoles. They're moving the chains, trying to take advantage of this turnover. Goes to Temple. You know, how do you deal with this in practice? If you do, now you got it. It's right in your face, and you have to deal with it. And coverage all around on four wide receivers. Peter Warwick is the inside receiver at the top of the three you see to the top of your screen. Wenke is throwing to Warwick behind him. He was wide open. Clark was five yards back. Now that's strange. That's intended for Peter Warwick. Ryan Stallmeyer had good Very pressure on the quarterback that time. Incomplete. And Wenke threw before the break of Peter Warwick and behind him. But no pressure on Peter Warwick. I mean, I don't know why Darius Clark went away from that. I mean, he's a guy you want to get up and press and get around. No huddle for Florida State out of the shotgun. Wenke there with Miner. His lone setback. Four wide receivers, two to each side. Over the middle, it is complete. 
to Travis Miner, and he's brought down at the 14-yard line. It's a gain of 11 on the play. It brings up another first down for Florida State. Ryan Stallmeyer in on the tackle for the Duke Blue Devils. Stevie really did a pretty good job because he kept everything right in front of him. That's all you can do. Florida State makes a living on yards after the catch. Now let's watch this. You talk about Star Mars, he has pretty good position. Now you want to get your people to the point of attack and you want to converge. First and 10 at the 14, two wide outs, Dugans and Warwick. Winky changing up. He has Kendrick, Kendra rather, and Miner in the backfield. This is Miner on the pitch, headed to the corner. He'll turn it up at the five, and he's close to a first down at the four yard line. Kevin Lewis in on the tackle along with Eric Jones. It'll be close enough. It might be close enough for a measure. It's really scary, man, when you start to go right after the, their best players. There you see the, the void right in there. Tackle on tackle, helmet on. Now watch this. So to square up the shoulder, there's Warwick. Here's the Heisman candidate right outside, giving you effort on the edge. On second and one, Kendra, the fullback, gets the first down to the three-yard line. And Florida State wasting no time in seven plays. They move from the 49 down to the two-yard line. And they have first and goal there, trying to take advantage of the turnover. Kevin Lewis, along with Chris Combs, in on the tackle. Combs had hoped to be playing on the other end of the field, son. First and goal on the three. Before having to defend their own red zone. First and goal at the three. Wanky back to throw. Wanky over the middle as a receiver complete. It's Warwick for the touchdown. Lamar Grant covering, but Peter Warwick has scored through the air for the third time this season. You see it on film, and you just don't get a good take for it. And you see it up close, and it's too quick for you. Sebastian Janikowski is in for the point after, as Peter Warwick has taken a two-yard pass from Chris Wanky to cap a, an eight-play drive. Janikowski's kick is good, and we'll see Wanky's seventh touchdown pass of this season. And the third in direction of Peter Warren. Shake it off. Shake it off. Did you say something? Shake it off. Shake what on? Texas Pete. Shake it on. <laughs> ah. Are you throwing your voice again, Lulu? Big tip. Texas Pete. Shake it up and shake it up. Domino's Pizza Lovers, tell us how you like your crust. I want a crust that's really classic. Our hand tossed is like that. We like it tender, warm, and thick. Our deep dish crust is like that. I'm really in to the thick. Domino's, how you like it. Enter the Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes. Order any Domino's pizza for details on how you could win a trip for two to four major bowl games, including the national championship game at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, plus $1,000 cash. Get two medium pizzas with up to two toppings and a two-liter Coke for $13.99. Call Domino's now. When do you think? Come on, girl, it's time to shake things up. Get a good guru. Get out of this room. Talking woman to woman. someone offers to install your security system, replace an old fuse box, or perform any major electrical work without a permit, watch out. They may be unlicensed and looking to rip you off. Unlicensed contractors often arrive in unmarked vans or trucks, ask you to pull the building permits, list a P.O. box or a local motel as their address, or ask for all the money up front. Contact the Electrical Contractors Licensing Board at the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. Don't get nailed. Always hire a licensed contractor. To Altel Stadium. How do you spell Heisman? Well, it just might be Peter Warwick. Second pass in his direction, and the first that he caught was for a two yard score. And that's what we have on the board right now. 7 0 Florida State over top ranked Duke, or top ranked uh, well, uh, against Duke, which has yet to pick up its first ACC win this season. Now you pick your poison. They blew Duke, squandered great field position. They may not get that again the way he's kicks off get a chance and I don't think they're going to get it this time. 
deep in the end zone, out of the end zone, over the head of Richmond Flowers. And it'll come out to the 21st and 10. Sebastian Janikowski, 35 kicks. The Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes is here. You and a friend could win an all-expense-paid trip for four college football bowl games in five days. That is quite a lot of football, including the national championship game January 4th, 2000. Orleans. Register online today at jpsports.com or send the form that will be found on all Domino's Pizza Box Talkers. Domino's Bull Blitz Sweepstakes, your chance for a football fan's dream trip. First and ten, Duke, they're at their own 20. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field, four total in the formation. And out of the shotgun, Bobby Cannon. First pass was thrown for an interception. Steps up, fires, and overthrows. Looks like Kyle Moore, and he got hit. And hit hard by Sean Key. Key on the coverage. Well, again, let's watch the eyes of the quarterback, and we'll find out what happens with the receiver. Whenever you go down the middle, down the pipe, that's hitting it right down the pipe there. You're in trouble. And you got to give him a lot of credit because Moore never flinched. Now let's watch again the eyes of the quarterback. See, you telegraph the message. So that gives a free safety. I mean, he just licks his chops. Wiped up Kyle Moore. Three wide receivers. Again to the short side of the field. And up the middle it goes to Emerson. And Wayne Emerson from the state of Florida gets a first down he after the 35-yard line. Emerson, Emerson, actually, he's from Falls Church, Corey Virginia. Simon, and Corey Simon, All-ACC and first-team All-American, makes the tackle. A 15-yard gain for Duke. Well, that's the key to, to any success you want to get against the tackles. They're so quick, they charge up field. If you can pop right at them, you do <laughs> increase your chances. Paul Franks lamented to us uh, the lack of a ground game for Duke to be able to balance what they can do in the air. Out of the shotgun, here comes Campbell, and his pass is deflected by, you guessed it, Corey Simon. And a holding call is going to be flagged in here on top of that. Jamal Reynolds had a real nice rush from his right side. Jim Knight, our referee. And here's the call. So let's see whether we can see the holding call. He comes outside here. Watch him here, right in this angle, right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a little strangle move. In the meantime, Corey Simon was batting down the ball of. Bobby Campbell. You watch, you can see hands are just high. You want to keep the hands inside the framework of the numbers. First and 20. Shovel pass ahead, Epperson. Epperson gets some running room. And he's up again, back to the 35, which is the original line of scrimmage. The 10 yard gain when Corey Simon brings it down for his third tackle of the afternoon. You look at Duke, you're only averaging 50 yards a game on the ground, but well, what he just showed us there, Dwayne, he squared his shoulders up. You can't horse around. This is not a, a, a game to be cute. You got to square up and you better scat and get out of there. That was a very, very, very well done. Second and 10, gain of 10 on the play. You, you, there's not many, there aren't many mysteries to what Florida State does defensively. They just do whatever they do well. They've got a blitz on, a rash. Duke picks it up. Campbell on the throw to Erbil Jack and good coverage on the play Campbell by Cam Clevin Thomas. Dan Erbil Jack. Derek Gibson defensively. And Derek Gibson also on the play. Ben Erdeljack, the intended receiver. Ball was in the vicinity. Yeah. Man, you, you have to help your quarterback, and that was a good idea. Good throw, but that Derek Gibson, you talk about a maniac. I mean, this guy gets all over the field, has great range, right in line with the great uh, seminal safeties, and he is just a thorn in your side in the run game. They're so deep at that position, too. Mickey Andrews chooses the starters. On Friday, he says, I got four guys who can go at cornerback, and I'm making a decision based on practice. The draw play, straight ahead, and it is going to be taken by Devin Pierce, the junior from Boca Raton, Florida. But we've got a flag on the play. Tackled by Sean Key, but could be all for naught here. Although Florida State might decide they could bring this up to fourth down. Good legal motion by the offense. And that's just the call. Florida State declines the penalty. They'll accept the gain, which is a yard, but it brings up fourth down nine, and 
Now here comes the adventure. Brian Morton from Winter Haven, Florida. His job is to keep it away from Peter Warren, who's back in punt formation, the leading punt returner in the entire country in NCAA Division I football. And Kyle Moore, the left release man, has got to get down there and be a factor. Warren averages 40 a kick. It's a hang time, and Warwick will get a chance to return it at the 24. Upfield, good coverage by Duke, and they flatten him at the 33-yard line. It's a gain of nine on the play after the 42-yard kick by Brian Morton. So the job accomplished. Luke Roush is in on the tackle. Coming up next week at high noon on most of these same ACC stations, we got a good one for you. The vastly improved Maryland Terrapins take on another vastly improved football team, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. It'll be a good one from Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem next week. We hope you're with us on Jefferson Pilot Sports. First and 10, Florida State. And they'll start from their own 32-yard line. Kendra at quarterback as Travis Miner set up there. Four wide outs. Warwick to the bottom of your screen on the inside. Wenke steps up and nice tackle on the play made by Charles Porter, the sophomore from Columbia, Maryland. Let's go back to our Geico starting lineups. We didn't get a chance to set that offensive line. They've got a good one. Jason Whitaker, an all ACC selection, playing that tight guard. That's where the tight end goes. The other side is the split guard, where the split ends are. Of course, what happens if they're split all over the field? I'm going to let you deal with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great move for Duke, though, just to get some pressure. Second down pass is complete. And it is uh, brought down by Marvin Minnis, Jr., out of Miami, Florida. And let's take a look at the Duke defense. Chris Combs, Outland Trophy candidate, and a good group at linebacker. And we talked about Knight, Lewis, Stalmar, DeLavalier, and, of course, nice corners in Holly and Hamilton. Mark Grant. Grant. Yeah, Grant, there, too. Yeah, he's coming off... Uh, a team suspension for violating team rules. But, uh, he has a lot of experience at that point. Third down and nine. Florida State leading here, seven and up. Chris Wanky out of the shotgun. Wanky has a release in minor, but he's going deep, and it is Nilmos caught and dropped by Jermaine Stringer. Covering on the play, Darius Clark with Ronnie Hamilton and Lamar Grant. Well, you know they're going to take a, a shot at it. I mean, that's the Florida State. But that's a great job again by Grandy. You watch this. The pressure early on, I think, is always a factor with quarterback. Maybe you speed up a bit. Ball is there. Looks nice at this point. Great adjustment. At this point, jump ball. Nearly a spectacular catch. Oh, Stringer almost came up with it. Here's Keith Cottrell, junior from Orlando in punt formation. And he gets off of beauty. Hurdle Jack is driven back to his 22. He dodges one tackler, now gets upfield. Nice return, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line. A flag, however, on the play. And there is Cottrell going off the field after a beautiful punt. Jamal Reynolds on the tackle in punt formation, but let's see what the flag is, and it's back at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a personal foul roughing the kicker. He's getting high fives, acting job. He did get hit, but I mean, you got to lay a little extra on it. Here's Jim Knight. Personal foul. Personal foul. Roughing the Ruffing kicker, the on, the kicker defense. on the defense. First down. First down. Man. Let's see it once again as Cottrell goes back. Now you get a chance to stop them, and then you have this. Now, see, you can't aim at the punter. You have to go where the ball will be. Launch point, see? And then you just can't, especially when you come right up the gut. And still with all that pressure, he uncorked a 40-plus kick. Yeah, that's a, that's a gift. You don't want to, as you said, Doc, don't feed the fire. And Duke has just provided another wood on the fireplace. As Bernius Coles takes Chris Wanky's pass down to the 45-yard line. Duke is going to be a gain of six on the play. Well, the first offensive possession, interception. The second, they had a holding penalty and a procedure. Now you get a flag on special teams. And uh, again, you keep the monster alive. Second down and four. Minor in motion. Throwing to that direction to Warwick. On a little...
screen out on the corner, and he gets the first down inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. And let's get down to the sidelines for something about Lamar Grant from Mike Hogwood. Well, Steve, you talked about him being suspended for three games. This is a veteran senior who started 27 games in his Duke career. He's been on the scout team all season until Tuesday of this week. Coach Carl Frank says he's really been impressed with his attitude, the way he handled the suspension. He's back. How much is he playing today? Well, he's played every snap on defense so far, and he's on every special team today as well. Broken up one ball. First and ten, Florida State at the Duke 39. Wink to the flat. Warren at the 30. Duke's pass one tackler. Has some interference in front of him. Touchdown, Florida State. Lavernius Coles with a great block at the 10. And Peter Warwick has scored for the second time today. Boy, they make you pay. That, that's what I like when you watch them. They make you pay for your mistakes. We talked about it. Yards after the catch. See a little bit of pressure. Now watch this. There's a whoops. One of those cartoon moves. And at this point, had it been flagged, he still scores. Janikowski getting ready for the point after his second attempt of the afternoon. Florida State takes advantage of the roughing the kicker call to score on Peter Warwick's 39-yard touchdown reception, his second of the day from Chris Wenke. Rack after this from your local ACC station. Dodge Neon is loaded with great stuff. A 132-horse engine, four-wheel independent suspension, even theater-style lighting and a standard six-speaker stereo. Perfect for those heavy dates. Dodge Neon. Different. Are you ready for the Monster Mac meal at McDonald's? Start with the Monster Mac, a great-tasting double Big Mac sandwich. Add a medium order of our world-famous French fries and top it off with a soft drink and a special 32-ounce Coca-Cola plastic cup that comes alive with a monster when the cup is full. It's the Monster Mac Meal at McDonald's. And for a limited time, it's only $3.99. So hurry before this offer disappears before your very eyes. Did somebody say McDonald's? Hurricane season. Are you prepared? Hi, I'm Ed Muir, Doppler 6 Weather. During the storm, keep a battery-powered radio or TV tuned to Channel 6 for the latest weather advisories. Do not use electrical appliances. Stay inside and keep away from windows. Find a safe area in your home. Be sure to wear durable walking shoes. If the storm passes near your area, there may be a brief period of calm, but do not go outside. The Doppler 6 Weather Team on Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Get ready for the Cystic Fibrosis Charity Golf Tournament, presented by the law firm of Von Hinkel & Lewis and First American Title Insurance Company on Monday, October 18th. The tournament will be held at Golden Eagle Country Club and will tee off with a pre-tournament party and silent auction on Sunday, October 17th at the offices of First American. Proceeds benefit the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, helping to improve the quality of life for the 30,000 children and young adults affected by this genetic disease. For more information, call 402-4101. Peter Warwick. Catching his second touchdown pass of the day and the 31st of his career. And look at those. These are updated numbers. 169. He came in with 166. He has a chance to be the ACC's all-time leading receiver if he catches a little over seven a game. And second all-time at FSU in receiving yards as well. Peter Warwick put his name up there in Heisman consideration. Joe Hamilton did a pretty good job in that direction Thursday night. Oh, yeah. Sebastian Janikowski kicked it through the uprights <laughs> from 75 yards. And it will not be returned. His third kickoff of the afternoon. Matt from Poland came over at age 15. Look at Ertljack. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think it's out of here. That is power. So Duke takes over first and 10. Unfortunate circumstances, really, Doc, when you take a look at what Duke had accomplished defensively in that last series. They had stopped them. Had to stop. Had to stop. Had Give it up. up. Violated everything it takes right now to be good and compete against the Seminoles. Epperson is the lone setback. 
Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Emerson getting some good yardage, and Duke has done pretty well on the ground here so far this afternoon. Not the 25 or 26 yard line. It's the only chance you get if you go right at them. You can't get outside on the edge. That's out. Forget about it. But if you run right at those great tackles, if you catch them on the way to the quarterback, yeah. you might get a crease. <laughs> That's exactly where they're headed. Second down and five. Moore, Montgomery, and Erdl Jack to one side. Flowers to the bottom side. Campbell changing up. Three step drop, going for Flowers. And he runs into Mario Edwards, who was covering on the play, and there's a flag down. Could be interference on Edwards, who held Flowers from getting behind him. Mario Edwards, a senior from Gauthier, Mississippi. The thing with Mario is such a big guy. 6'2", 195. There's a break for Duke. It is. Another break. See if they capitalize. Now watch it now. Let's see the check. Or a decent release. There's a the first bit of contact. Let's see if they hit again. Yeah. See you right there. The ball's in flight. Good call. So the pass interference moves the chains out to the 37-yard line. The guilty party, Mario Edwards. Six career interceptions. You want to make sure that Flowers didn't get back. Three wide receivers again. Setback is Emerson. They've run out of this. They won't this time. Campbell in the grass, and he goes down. And it is Jamal Reynolds. We have a flag on the play on the far sideline. Number 58, Jamal Reynolds. He's number two in the ACC in sacks this year. And Campbell goes down for the first time this afternoon. What's the flag here? Prior to the snap, head ball, false start on the offense, five yards, first snap. So, false start for Duke. It'll be first and 15. Take a look at our Cross Creek College football scoreboard today. East Carolina Pirates with a stirring win over Miami. Oh, boy, were they outstanding or what? The leading army today. Michigan, big, big 10 game. Michigan State with a one touchdown lead. And the first, we'll have others as the afternoon rolls on. First and 15 for the Blue Devils, trailing 14 0. Big rush is on. Screen pass to Epperson. Epperson trying to get his way for, away from Bradley Jennings and is brought down there by. Campbell's pass complete to number 33, Dwayne Epperson. Reggie Durden. Bradley Jennings. That's a pretty good job to get it going. You want to take advantage of their rush. A little X game up front by the Seminoles. That's pretty well done. Maybe just a second off in that. You got everybody who you want. Now watch how quickly they react. They make up for it, get off blocks, and then they get to the point of attack in a hurry. Gain of three. Brings up second down and 12. Remember they had the penalty on the first play after the first down. Flowers and Montgomery split to the wide side of the field. Hurdle Jack to the short side. Out of the shotgun, Campbell. Big rush is on. He gets rid of it. But you can't blame Campbell for that. Not because, at all. No, Jamal Reynolds Bobby was Campbell in the back of his helmet. Not at all. And that's the only time you will Mario get. Edwards. And watch how this converges. This is the manhood coming to the point of attack. All of those people there, man, that's a function at the junction. That kid stood in there like a soldier and got the ball out. You got to have great catches by your receivers in a game against Florida State. It will not be perfect. The ball may not be right on your numbers. You got to climb the ladder. Not with Warren, Reynolds, and Simon. <laughs> Brent and Daniel Rose. <laughs> Third down and 12. Duke down by two scores. We're in the first quarter here in Jacksonville. Campbell lets one fly over the middle. Almost intercepted by Mario Edwards. Intended on the play for Ben Erdeljack. If it hangs in the air, it's theirs. That's a pretty safe rule of thumb. If it hangs in the air, it belongs to them. There you get a little burst, a little seam route. Very nice route, but he's going up against zone. So at that point, you got to throw it in there underneath. you got to get quick, or you're going to have that happen. And when you're throwing the spots, your defenders yeah. have a better beat yeah. on it than you do. you got to throw when the kid's in his break. Morton now trying to slow down Warwick. At the third, no, oh, no. that's oh. Durden on the return, and Durden fumbles, reverses direction. Look out. And gain speed. Watch out, Morton gets blocked. Durden gets turned and finally tackled at the 32.
And a tackle by Dan Umbel. But Morton's kick is returned to the 32 and Florida State with excellent field position following a 34-yard punt. This man has found that a 1966 Mustang is a finicky little lady. She demands love, devotion, and a four-barrel Holly carburetor. At Advanced Auto Parts, it's our job to see that she gets the carburetor and any other hard-to-find part overnight. As for the love and devotion, well, let's just say there are some things we won't get involved with. Folks, are you still buying chicken sandwiches from those burger boys? Why? Some of them boys grill their chicken dry as an old shoe. My new tender roast sandwich is deep marinated so it's full of flavor, slow roasted so it's tender and juicy. Try my new tender roast sandwich. Right now it's just $1.99. $1.99? I could do that. I'm the curve. At KFC, we do chicken right. In the bucket and now on a bun. It seems to me people are looking for the same things in their internet service as in their phone company. They want reliability, friendly service, and a good-looking spokesperson. Are they hiring someone? And since we're the experts in phone lines, you know, it would only make sense that Bell South would be the experts in internet service. Oh, you mean with our utilization of larger bandwidths and a high-capacity network infrastructure? Show off. You don't think I'm good-looking? We're cute. Thanks. Ish. The 2000 BMW Z3 Roadster. This is as fun as it gets. Bank of America, an official corporate partner of the ACC, presents this salute to excellence question over the past four seasons. Which two ACC teams rank one and two among all Division I-A programs in total defense? If you know the answer, log on to ACC.com with the correct answer before next Saturday's telecast, and you'll be entered to win two tickets to the ACC Bowl Champion game. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have that answer for you before the end of the game. So it's an open book test, essentially. First and ten at the Duke 32, Chris Wenke. After the 37-yard punt return of Reggie Durden to Travis Miner, a great open field tackle by Ronnie Hamilton, three yards downfield at the 29-yard line. And a beautiful punt return set it up. You know, Ronnie Hamilton. You say, you know, you say great tackle, and you can't emphasize that uh, even more because if you don't get him down, they're out of here. And, and it's not just one guy. It appears to be all of them. <laughs> Second down. And six. Dugans to the top. Warwick to the bottom. Wanky to the air and through the middle. And he was looking for Warwick who had double coverage, but there's a flag down. Eric Jones and Lamar Grant double covered on Peter Warwick, but there was contact there and a flag went down. Thought he had a chance at the interception. I'll take a look, another look at it. Great uh, blitz pickup. Dan Kendra, former quarterback, doing a nice job at fullback. Pass interference against Duke. Let's look at it again. Now you see Jones in your screen, a little play action fake. Good block and see Chris Combs there. Boy, great blocking up front against Whitaker. I don't know. See, I thought Jones had a hand on the ball. Now at that point, there is contact there. Okay, yeah, there's from contact Grant. There. Yeah. There's contact, there's contact on Grant before the play. I'll tell you what, though. you talk about a young man who is happy to be back in uniform. <laughs> That's Lamar Grant. Well, it's a 15-yard penalty and a first down. Inside the 15 down to the 13. Comes the pitch to Miner. Miner up over the 10 and is finally brought down at the 7. First shoulder threw in there by Darius Clark. And Todd DeLamalore and Ryan Stallmeyer help out. Now you mentioned Jason Whitaker, 68 white for the Seminoles. You know, their offensive linemen don't get a heck of a lot of accolades, but this young man is, uh, he's special. There's Chris Combs in the ready position on second down and three. All of the seven and a half yard line. Wait. 
changing up. And Warren to one side, Dugans to the other. And off is on the delay to Miner, and Miner looks like he's got enough for the first down. Steinbaugh tripped him up. Delamalor and Clark finish him off. Kevin Lewis and Eric Jones make the snow. That's another first down for the Seminoles. You talk about Whitaker again. Here you see Combs, and here you there you see Whitaker. Now watch it. This guy gets inside. He's strong. See how his hands placement, the hands are right inside on the numbers. I mean, that right there is an excellent job of dealing with an outstanding football player. Travis Minor sees. Michigan seeks balance on offense. They want to run the ball. And Going for the end zone again to Peter Warwick for the third time today. Peter Warwick three scores here in the first quarter. One from two, one from 39, and another from two yards out. His third touchdown reception of the day and. Florida State is up 20 to nothing over Duke here in the first. Sebastian Janikowski out of the hole to Marcus Outson. Kick is good. And Florida State is up by three scores. And Peter Warwick has done it again thanks to Chris Winkie on the pass. And thanks to that offensive line again, you're going to see Whitaker, the personal protector, comes out. Winkie, you know, is basically untouched. Watch the action again. Big number 68 comes out. I'd like to have that guy as your bodyguard. Here's Winky. See, eye on the receiver. And I don't care what kind of job Grant does. He's doing a great job outside, but you can't have a quarterback not get pressure on him and look out to a young man with his skills. Peter Warwick, Heisman candidate. You better believe it. Peter Warwick, Heisman candidate, and uh, today. 12.3 average on the four pass receptions. I love to see young men that they decide to stay in school. And if it works for them, I'm all for it. If it doesn't work for them, they got to take care of what they've got to do. But he's back, and he's back with purpose. He's the hardest working kid on the team, and that influences all of the young people. You go home, you call mom, hey, mom, boy, Peter Warren, he runs his sprints, he lifts weight, he does all this, then you're going to do it too. And that's the best thing I think he has been able to lend to this uh, football program. You go into class, you know, just being a model citizen. Well, Mark Rick told us earlier, he says he's the hardest practice player out there. You know, you, when a player who you think is going to go pro early, like Peter Ward probably could have, when he does that, then it makes you coach, put your coach in a tough position telling the receivers who stayed behind. As Ertel Jack downs the ball in the end zone for a touchback, but this is nothing new for the Seminoles. Look last week against North Carolina. Travis Miner scores on the first drive. Then they run a fumble in. And then a pass interception by Sean Key for a third score. And Peter Warwick got involved with a long punt return for 75 yards and a touchdown. And they accomplished all of that in seven and a half minutes in the first quarter at Chapel Hill. It took them a little longer here. <laughs> oh, boy. But they've been blessed with some breaks. They've had a good punt return to set up that last drive. Mm -hmm. The second drive was perpetuated by a roughing penalty. against Duke on a fourth down punt. First and 10, Duke, their own 20. And here's Bobby Campbell out into the flats, and it is complete to Richmond Flowers. And Flowers has a first down at the 32. That is nice. When you look at Duke on film following this ball game, there's a lot of things so far you can be happy about. You got to get after him quick. A little hesitation. Nice little in and out. Now, now I, like, I like this. See, you get a pivot and you create. See, you show them, hey, you can get a little yards after the catch. And that's what you've got to do against the Seminoles. You talked about the two people who have got to put numbers on the board here today for Duke. Yeah, but where's Scott? Yeah, but where's Scott? You may see him soon. He hasn't caught one yet. Here's one thrown in his direction, and it is complete just in time, Doc, at the 37 yard line. Duke starting to move the football, and Montgomery with his first pass reception of the day. Heck, if I'd have known I was Mike inside the huddle, I'd have been talking earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know, Scott is a heck of a, a receiver, makes people miss. And this is the thing that they've got to do. Just keep the drives alive, move the chains, exactly. you know, and keep Winky and that uh, 
<laughs> and that other number nine yeah. goes to the field. Another phenomenal athlete off the field. Montgomery in motion. And off of B.J. Hill, his first carry of the day, and uh, he doesn't get much there. Stopped up on the interior of the Florida State defensive Jackson. line. Yeah. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. See, Florida State has been running a lot of players in and out. Last week against North Carolina in the first quarter, they played 52 players. They're approaching that here in this game. Still a couple minutes to play in the first period. They try to, they try to wear you down, and of course, technically, this is an away game for Florida State, so they couldn't travel. All of the people that usually suit up at a home game. That's scary. He's moral. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and eight. Duke down 21 nothing out of the shotgun. No. Campbell, big rush on. Oh, didn't see it. Oh, boy. Earl Jack almost intercepted, I think, by Gibson. Allen was the one who was in there early. Brian Allen with heavy pressure. Now, I, I will bet you a double cheeseburger. Ooh. Carl Franks went over this. Let's pick up, guys. This will happen. Who's the hot receiver? Earl Jack has his back to the quarterback. I mean, I, I know these guys went over it. I know Ben Bennett and these guys went over this, and that they don't get credit for it because the kids don't react under pressure properly. Ryan Morton to kick, and Peter Warwick is back. Warwick comes up to get the short kick. A chance to go. Fair mistake by Warwick on the punt. At the 37-yard line, no return. Randy Amen made sure he stayed down. The punt is 31 yards by Morton, but uh, Carl Franks will accept that without a return. Well, that's twice now. The punt returns, the ball has been on the ground, and no Duke player has been in the vicinity. See, if they give you chances, you've got to take advantage of it. ACC fans, visit participating JCPenney locations in your area for your official ACC Collection merchandise. Look the part, and JCPenney and the ACC Collection will help you. First and 10, Florida State at their own 36. Wanky rolling out left, stops, big rush is on. Goes back to the right now, looking for the field of flood of receivers at that side, and it looks like it's going to be ruled complete to Stringer. In Duke territory at the 37. There might be some consultation on that play, but that's where they're going to mark it. Ronnie Hamilton made sure he'd stay down. What a play by Chris Wanky. Big fella, showing some mobility. I want you to watch this guy there, Carlos Thomas. Watch what happens with this guy. Here's Whitaker, personal protector, doing his job, gets a cut down block. Then you're going to see right there, that's the double block by Thomas. So Thomas gets the start, makes the play, Winky squares his shoulders. Makes a throw. Watch the catch. Now they're talking things over. Kind of clips. <laughs> and, they, and, and, and I think the crew realizes that. Stringer, I mean, might be a little assistance. Gonna, on the green stuff. You might hear from Jim Knight on this one. Flag is thrown. Illegal touching. By the offense. The receiver stepped out of bounds. Wow. I tell you what, and of course that caused by, you know, everything was kind of breaking down. Winky was rolling to the left. Yeah, bumped out about. Yeah. 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 That's a good idea by the by the corner. Well, it might have been Hamilton to see who had that, but you get a guy scrambling, you knock him out of bounds. Good to see old Jim Knight. Every time I, I, I see him. Just feel great. Think of that day in Chapel Hill. Oh, man. It's great to see him out there on the field. And he's one of the best. Yes, indeed. Four wideouts now for Florida State. They're facing second down and ten. And now Florida State wants timeout. Peter Warwick makes the call. Bob Trott's group putting a little pressure on the Seminoles. You know, they played pretty well. Yeah. I mean, you take yeah. away the roughing penalty, and uh, they would have had a stop on the, the second series. Of course, that's the problem. Yep. Everybody says that the plays. You know, if we just may have been able to avoid it. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Florida State, top the AP top 25 in the first position. Georgia Tech, of course, at ninth after their win over Maryland. Virginia is 24. How about ECU at 19? Well earned with their win over Miami. Coming from a 20 to 3 deficit. Yeah, man. Wow. 
It makes our producer the happy. Yeah, our, all our producer's really happy because he's an like ECU man. He's a pirate. Pitbull. We're happy for him Not as well. And that's about it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you could have mentioned his name, Steve. Scott Snyder? Never. No, don't do that. There's Bobby Bowden, one of the biggest names in coaching in college football. And from talking to him on our conference call on Thursday, we still get the impression that he's pretty happy about what he does. Oh, man. Slice of life, as they say. Developing young people, having fun. You know, and again, we, we mentioned it in the open when the pressure is that you got to win them all. Yeah. You know, you're measured by where you end up first week of January. Look at the record 101, 13 and 1 in the 90s. The best record in college football. Second down. 10 to go. Florida State after the timeout. Travis Miners alone set back. Coles and Warren to the top. Duke and Minnis to the bottom. Three-man rush for Duke. Went over the middle. Complete the minor. So it was none of the above. It gets it out to the 43-yard line. And Todd DeLamalor is in on the tackle. Gain of seven. Gain of seven on the play. Stallmeyer also went on the stop. Hey, you know, you know, that's okay. Just keep him in front of him. I mean, just keep him in front of him. <laughs> Receiver package to the back. Same formation this time. Warwick. And Warwick out of the quarterback spot. And Warwick is driven back. Oh my. Peter Warwick carries. And also in on the tackle is going to be Brian McCormick. Brian McCormick. Makes the stop at the 47 yard line. Gain He's four. everywhere. Here he is now. At the quarterback spot. Then you see 68 again, Whitaker. Another nice block. And that offensive line. And then you see a hammer hit. Boy, that is a nice tag. Back to throw. Here's Wenke. Wenke has some pressure in the grasp of Stallmeyer, and it's free deflected ball. in the air. Free ball. Can anybody get it? It might have fallen to the ground, but there's a flag down on the play. Great pressure by Stallmeyer on Wenke. Kendrell Knight comes up with a football, but let's see what the flag is all about. Porter was the man who tipped the football. Blue Devils get nasty. The question is, when the ball's in the air, I mean, who has the right? I mean, because there was some shoving going on after the quote jump ball. Another illegal touching again. All right, we check it out again. There's Winky trying to square the shoulders up. This time, Woodard gets beat. Stallmeyer eats him up, and Lee see the top off. See, that's what the Blue Devils need a lot more of. And of course, Chris Wanky suffered a season-ending injury last year against the Virginia Cavaliers. And uh, that opened the way for Marcus Hudson at the end of the season. Of course, Wanky was a substitute quarterback himself because Dan Kendra was supposed to be the starter last year. of a forward pass by the And we've seen some pages of the rule book we haven't seen in a while. Two illegal touching. Well, Mark Rick, their offensive coordinator, Mick Andrews, both stressed to us that too many penalties for the simple. They wanted to really play, uh, you know, they looked for the perfect plays like everybody is, but they wanted to really cut those down. All right, Mikey, the quarterback, he's got Jeff Cheney in the backfield with him for the first time today. 34 front by Duke, so he's got a chance to keep him in front of him. And the pass is incomplete, but there's a flag down on the play. The pass was intended for Talman Gardner, a redshirt freshman from New Orleans, but Lamar Grant, who's been all over the field today, is about to get picked for his second penalty. They can't buy a break. And they play well. You got a three-man rush. They give you a little flood, two receiver side. Nice little slant and ball's got to be on Pass the way. At that point, it's like both guys going for the ball. Yards, first down. So it's a 15-yard penalty and another first down for Florida State. This time in Duke territory, they'll spot the ball at the Duke 43. They've been consistent. You know, it's almost like hoops. How you call the call it tight now? Yep, with that, but they've been consistent. Wanky at quarterback again. Holmes got into the neutral zone, but he got back. A lot of times you can slip on that logo. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they put it there. Here's Cheney. 
Jeff Cheney gets his first carry of the Jeff day Cheney inside carries. the 40 to the 37. Darius Clark and Brian Stop Stallmeyer on the tackle of the junior from Darius Lake Clark. Wales, Florida. Number 45. Heard a defensive back Todd to a running over. back. Eight of six. Dude, you, you really hang in now, Steve. You just keep making them run plays, and you try to hang in and, and hope something good happens for you defensively. No huddle, same receiver group again. And the fake draw. Now it is a draw to Cheney again. It's yep. Cheney, yeah. Cheney again, and it's going to be a first down this time inside the 35-yard line down to the 32. Darius Clark and Mike Steinbaugh in on the tackle for the Duke. First and 10 for the state. Florida State. Thomas, a man up for Williams. I mean, these guys give you a chance in the run game and the passing game. Second group of four receivers hanging in there. Cheney is in the backfield. Blinky with the throw, and it is incomplete and overthrown. Intended for Artrus Bell. Former walk-on. Intended for Artrus Bell. From here in Jacksonville. Second and fact. A lot of Jacksonville players. This is a great opportunity for Florida State to showcase some of its players from this very fertile recruiting ground here in Jacksonville. This game actually is Duke's home game, but it, uh, for financial consideration, was sold to the Seminoles and actually to the city of Jacksonville as part of their River Raid weekend. Second down and 10 for the Seminoles. As we wind down the first quarter. Last play of the quarter. Cheney once again. And Cheney straight ahead, thrown back Jeff to the 30 yard line. Three blue shirts. Yep. Ryan McCormick led the charge, and that ends the first quarter of play. The Florida State Seminoles featuring Peter Warren. What a shock. Up by three scores on the Duke Blue Devils through one. Most compact club calves just aren't cut out for big loads. So you end up leaving a little cargo behind. Having to lose a little weight. Cutting your funds short. Dodge Dakota, however, is different. With more available payload, towing, and power. Dakota, anything less, doesn't cut it. Dodge Dakota, different. Am I on? <clears throat> Geico Direct could save you hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Result? Smaller bill. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more. At Geico, we get the ball rolling on your claim quickly. Even in the middle of the night. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more. You see him on the back road, you see him on the street Let me tell you, mister, the sure looks sweet They're sleek and they're smooth and rugged to boot They're a whole lot of style and they're fun to drive to When the job gets tough, you better have a four truck When the road gets rough, you gotta drive a four truck They're built for tough and that's a mighty strong stuff When the going gets tough, you gotta drive a four truck the tradition, the excitement, the speed, the Seminoles, the Bobby Bowden Show. Stick around, we've got some great Seminole football. Sunday mornings at 11.30, join Gene Deckerhoff and the coach for the Bobby Bowden Show on WCTV. And Burt Reynolds will have a great moment in Florida State history. Sunday mornings at 11.30, followed by the NFL Today on WCTV. Welcome back to Jacksonville through one Florida State 21 nothing over Duke and it has been the Peter Warwick show in fact he's accounted for all three touchdowns in the first quarter the first one a two yarder then the second one a 39 yard pass and run by Peter Warwick with a great block from Lavernius Cole to set him free making it 14 nothing and then the last another two yarder outside the grass with Lamar Grant Peter Warwick with three scores and that's where we stand through one here at Jacksonville. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here at Alltel Stadium in Jacksonville. Supposedly a neutral site. <laughs> Carl Frank says, I don't mind playing this here this year, but we won't do this again, I don't think. <laughs> well, Duke has Virginia next week. Third down coming up now for Florida State and about seven. Chris Wayne. 
And his first group of receivers in there. The pass for Lavernius Coles is in his hand. Josh Kreider is covering on the play. Let's take a look at our KFC first quarter stats and a, a heavy slant toward the Seminoles. Total yards and especially through the air. And they picked up a turnover that set up one score. Good punt return set up another. But they had a lot of help by Duke. Yeah, they did. And they very well could have been 10-zip or so in the first quarter. So Sebastian Janikowski is on to attempt the field goal. This will be a 47-yard attempt for Janikowski. He's 9 for 12 this season. His longest this year, 47. And he kicks it long enough and straight through. Sebastian Janikowski for his 10th field goal of the year. Now 10 for 13, and the Florida State Seminoles, top rank in the country, advance their lead to 24. 24-0 over the Duke Blue Devils as Janikowski goes to the sideline. What an amazing story that young man has put together. Florida State, 24-0, just 10 seconds into the period. A 46-yard field goal, and it capped an eight-play drive. It's the only score that Peter Warwick can claim ownership to so far today. I still believe you. You think of a punt, yeah, they forced him to kick a field goal. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been some positive things for Bob Trott's group on defense for Duke. They've been very, very aggressive getting people to the ball. Your source for sports on the internet, jpsports.com, is now online. Each week, we bring you previews of our upcoming telecast and in depth coverage of the ACC. So, you want the inside scoop? The place to log on to is jpsports.com. Where's Steve Martin? Oh, you'll come up later on. They're saving that promo, huh? Okay. When you're done reading Scott Snyder's preview of the next week's game, then if you haven't had enough... Scott Snyder or Lance Stewart? He has a ghost right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, I guess what say. <laughs> Seven plays, 36 yards, 217 to execute the field goal, and this one is out of bounds. Janikowski second of the day. A lot of extra hitting upfield, but this one will set Duke up again at the 35-yard line. First time this happened. First time this happened. Uh, yeah, Bobby gave away on the third play. So let's see if you take advantage of these opportunities here. It sounds strange, but you have to blank this out of your mind as an offensive player that the score is 20. You're down by 24. You just try to short memory, start it over again, think 0-0, zero, zero, and. Get some points on the board. Robbie Campbell still under center. Scotty Montgomery and Richmond Flowers are split to the top. Ben Ertel Jack to the bottom. Octavius Wilkes is in the backfield and he gets his first carry this season. He's been battling injuries. Gets up to the 40 yard line. It's a five yard gain for the Duke Blue Devils. And our thoughts go out to David Barringer and in particular his wife Sherry who is ill lately. And uh, David is a producer. Of ACC basketball and uh, part of the Jefferson Pilot Sports family. And David and Sherry were thinking of. It. Yes, indeed. Good people. Second down and five for Duke at their own 40 yard line. Tavius Wilkes and Devin Pierce are the split backs for Bobby Campbell. Big rush is on. Campbell releases. Wilkes can't hang on. He had no time to get rid of that one. Great yeah. pressure by Jamal Reynolds. It's almost like what's new. Yeah. But you have to have an, an, an internal clock that says get back, set up, get rid of it now. And, and anything else will get result in that. You will be hit. And Latavius Wilkes must make that catch to rescue that play. Oh, it's just like the tip pass on you know, defense where Grant had a chance at it. You have to convert those. Hurdle Jack wide to the right. To the left for Flowers and Montgomery. The lone setback is Wilkes on third down and five. Down 24 0. Over the middle, Wilkes gets another chance and converts. First down, and for the first time today, Duke is in Florida State territory at the 45. Reggie Durden on the tackle. Hello. It's his first pass reception of the year. See, there's a the pressure, a little double team there on Simon. So that works. You know, just throw and, throw and catch. It hurt that uh, he had a little slip there. Brian Allen slipped. 
But they're, they're mortal. Those guys slip, too. <laughs> no. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> I don't believe that. But when they slip, you better take advantage of it. <laughs> you better be ready. 14-yard reception that time. Wilkes again gets the carry. This is the Latavius Wilkes drive. Down to the 43 or 44-yard line. To the sidelines we go with Mike Oswald. <laughs> to add to what Doc said a moment ago, Carl Franks has been telling his team, sure, the score is 24 nothing, but that doesn't mean they're going to the air attack. As you see, they're still trying to establish a running game and the short passing game. The name for Duke is touchdowns. They haven't scored a lot this season. That's what they want to do here. Just try to get the score and get six points. Only two, in fact, Mike Hogwood. Second down. And long eight. Campbell out of the shotgun. Big rush is on. Got to stay blitzes two, and they've got Montgomery with dirt and coverage. And he's brought down at the 18-yard line. Reggie Durden on the tackle. They present opportunities because they will get in man. They believe in their corners, and they ought to. Let's watch this. Ah, oh, oh, I like that. Oh, pick action. Good throw and catch. 27 yards downfield to Scotty Montgomery. His second reception of the day, and it sets up Duke first and 10 in the red zone of the 18. That's a spy, which we fly. Yes, he did. And a nice little pick there. Oh, did we say that? No, you said pick. Okay. That's an assist. Okay. <laughs> Latavius Wilkes. <laughs> Minor things, aren't they? Down to the 16. It's a gain of two. Derek Gibson, the junior from Miami, in on the tackle for Florida State. But this is a nice looking dude drop. Yeah, now look at the offensive line. Andrews, Lynch, Smithwick, Fleming. Why these guys now can start to get a second breath because you start to sense you're getting close to the red area and you can put points on the board. Yeah, I know, I know. And these guys have been wailing at it. I mean, they, they haven't been able to substitute people. Flowers to the left with Kyle Moore in the slot. And Riddle Jack to the right. Campbell to throw, looking for his tight end, and he hits him. And, oh, that's, no, that's Kyle Moore. Moore yeah. It's Kyle Moore. More complete, good for about eight yards down to the 11-yard line. You know what I like now for Duke? Rhythm. That's They're right. into a rhythm. Yep. And that's the one thing that Mickey Andrews' group, they don't allow you to get into rhythm because they, they dictate defensively by putting so much pressure on you. Third down and two. Down 24 nothing, but threatening for the first time today. You mentioned tight end. Dupree wouldn't be a bad call now. No, it wouldn't. He's lined up over there on the right. Artopoulos and Montgomery and Erdl Jack the wide outs. This is Wilkes, and he is tripped up at the four-yard line by Sean Key. He got a shoulder on him. Otherwise, Wilkes was in the end zone. Yeah, and old Fleming is mad, too, because he, he can sense it. You know, we can say this over and over, man. Against this group, you can't slip. You got to keep your feet going. I mean, you know, you look at the block by number 71 on that. Troy Andrews got him going, and Duke is knocking on the door. This is the ninth play coming up of a drive that started at the Duke 35. First and goal at the three. Campbell with Hartopoulos, Montgomery, and Erdl Jack the wide outs. He falls as he hands off to Latavius Wilkes, and Wilkes gets Got it, it down. Back. Yeah, He almost lost the ball there once. <laughs> almost had a trip at the crew. You, you have to settle yourself down. You get so excited. You're just not accustomed to knocking on the door against this defense. And you just have to retain your composure. <laughs> See, that was good right there. Could have been disastrous. Yes, it could have been. Yeah. And look at that. Ooh, Wilkes yep. put it on the ground there for a second. Boy, that Corey Simon, the maniac. Courageous player. He's yeah, played he to a lot of hurts and won the Brian Piccolo Award last year. And deserving. So just a great hustle guy, great character guy. Timeout on the field called by Florida State to talk things over on second and goal. And we'll take the timeout as well. Florida State is up 24 to nothing, but they're trying to keep that goose egg on the scoreboard. Domino's Pizza Lovers, tell us how you like your crust. I want a crust that's really classic. Our hand toss is like that. We like it tender, warm, and thick. Our deep dish crust is like that. I'm really in to the thick. Domino's, how you like it. Enter the Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes. Order any Domino's pizza for details on how you could win a trip for two to four major bowl games, including the national championship game at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, plus $1,000 cash. Get two medium pizzas with up to two toppings and a two-liter Coke for $13.99. Call Domino's now. 
Advance Auto Parts presents the best play of the week in the ACC. This week, our play comes from the Florida State-North Carolina game in Chapel Hill. With the Seminoles already up 21-0, Heisman Trophy candidate Peter Warwick returns a Tar Heel punt 75 yards, going the whole way virtually untouched to the end zone and putting the game out of reach within the first seven minutes of the first quarter. And that's our Advance Auto Parts best play of the week. That's your best friend. He lives next door. He is such a cutie. <laughs> what you guys looking at? My daughter's kindergarten class just got a website. That's your favorite dress. Do we even have a website? And now with Bell South Site Builder. That's my mom's favorite dress. What are you guys looking at? My mom's company just got a website. Does she get a lot of hits? Website development. Another solution with Bell South Know How. Welcome back to Jacksonville. 24-0, Florida State on top, but Duke knocking on the door. They're second and goal from the three-yard line. Well, Scotty Montgomery getting the ball, moving the change. Duke is doing that on this drive, and they'd like to move the scoreboard a little bit. Latavius Wilkes, alone set back for Bobby Campbell. Campbell. Good to the right. It. Yeah, got to get rid of it into the end zone. Hurdle Jack, but he caught it out of bounds. Forced out of bounds by Reggie Durden. Bobby Rhodes had heavy pressure on Bobby Campbell. That's a good catch, actually, by Hurdle Yeah, Jack. it was, but you got to speed that operation up a bit. Here they come. Look at the surge on that defensive line. The boy, they capture and probably could have had a sack on that play. Carl Franks doesn't want to take three here. They want six. Latavius Wilkes again. This is third and goal. Three wide receivers to the right side. The pitch to the left. Latavius Wilkes, nothing there. Coming up to force the play was Bobby Rhodes. Boy, that was vicious. Junior from Eustis, Florida. Former walk-on. I mean, you talk about pursuit, and this is about angles. There you see 49 peeking through. Almost grabbed on it right there. You see him right there? He stays square. Boy, that's very well done. And Duke is called a timeout. There's Rhodes headed to the sidelines. He's a senior from Eustis, Florida. Well, Florida State atop the ACC standings with already three victories on the belt in their four overall games, including a big one over Georgia Tech. And of course, Clemson's hanging right in there. They've got a key game today against North Carolina, Virginia. What a win they had over Brigham Young. Georgia, that was something. Georgia Tech, Wake Forest tied at one all. Duke in their first venture in conference play this week. Maryland 0-1, but their overall 3-1 record's got a lot of people around the Washington, D.C. area happy. NC State, two conference losses, and same with North Carolina. So, very important game for the Tar Heels today at Clemson later this afternoon. Big contest, but Lamont Jordan, Romero. He's a man. Calvin McCall, oh, yeah. good job at quarterback. Now there's, there's Carl Franks. He's pretty happy with what Bobby Campbell's done on this drive. It's in its 10th play. They're trying to decide whether on fourth and goal from the three, do they want to kick a field goal? I think they don't want to right here. I think they want to go for six. They feel their defense is playing well enough. I'll tell you a group that's even happier than Carl Franks, and it's the defense for Duke. Those guys are going to actually sit on the sidelines a bit and, and get off that field. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, Carl Franks upset at Latavius Wilkes. He'd had a great series of that last play. He didn't turn it up north and south. They thought that that uh, read option play would work. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run it again. Latavius Wilkes is at tailback. I'd move that pocket. Whatever I did, I'd move it. Out of the eye formation, fourth and goal. Big rushes on from Rhodes. Campbell throws into the end zone. It is incomplete. Richmond Flowers had the best shot at it for Duke. 
But it was Mario Edwards who made the deflection as Campbell threw under pressure yet again, and Duke gives up on downs at the three-yard line. I like the call. Go for it. I mean, go down fight. But you have to have a chance to set up. Never gets a chance to set the feet. There's our guy again, Rhodes, the nemesis. Bobby's on the pressure. And at this point, it's a three-on-one jump ball. But who do you see? Mario Edwards. Edwards almost picked that off. Sure great, did. great series for Latavius Wilkes for Duke and a great series for that man. Yeah, Bobby Rose. Bobby Rose. Chris Wanky with his worst field position of the day from his own three. The handoff goes to Travis Miner. And he gets a big hole. Turns upfield, squares the shoulders, and Josh Kreider will knock him out of bounds. They'll mark him out at the actually the uh, 12 yard line. So it's a gain of nine. He did too fresh. They're not accustomed to watching that much. I mean, they want, they're on the field. It's out to the, actually, it's out to the 18. So it's a first down. It's a 14-yard game. Thank you again under center. Goes to the flats. It is complete to Warwick. And Warwick is out of bounds and complete for another first down. This one's at the 29-yard line. And that's the fifth reception of the day for Peter Warwick. He's had three others in the touchdown. Imagine, here you are. You're locked up out there one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Excitement. And you got to break on the ball, but you got to be balanced because you can ill afford to let him get away. It's a good job by Grant. A lot of room, but you got to secure it. It's an 11-yard gain, Wanky. Wanky rolls, throws a soft duck to the sidelines, and uh, that looked like it was intended for Ryan Spray. Warwick was in the area. Stallmeyer with the pressure. Winky has impressed me. He really has it. I didn't know he had that, that little something that could, he could feel the pressure as well. I mean, that time I thought Stallmeyer had a bead on him, and he got away from him. He's got great size, 6'5", 240. Very mature, obviously, 27 years old. Spent seven years in minor league baseball before returning to Florida State to play football. Second down and 10. Hand off to Miner. Miner breaks a tackle and is on his way. Kreider in pursuit. Clark will finally knock him down. And he'll knock him out at the Duke 43 yard line. It's about a 28 yard gain on the play. And it sets Florida State up where they've spent a lot of time this afternoon in Duke territory. Now we talked about Dan Kendra. He's a fullback right there. We talk about his contributions. Watch what happens at the point of attack. See right there. Gets the edge down on Stallmeyer. Excellent block. Poor tackle opportunity on the outside by Hamilton, and you can't miss tackles against this group. Nice tag, a nice uh, block by the wide receiver, Ron Dugans, as well. Oh, yeah. First and ten. Play action for Wenke. Throws under pressure, and the pass complete to Dugans. Got to get him down. And Grant finally gets him down there with help from Darius Clark. I think Wenke has a little arm strength. Yeah, I think a little bit. <laughs> Talking about the fastball low and away. Again, great pocket protection. Ball right on a rope. Boy, that's nice. He's thrown 30 touchdown passes. And today, that's a 20-yard gain. It's his 11th completion today. He's got three on the docket this afternoon. First and 10. Ball at the Duke 23. There's Cheney. And Cheney brought down by Kendall Knight. Todd Delamalor and also... Charles Porter has had an impressive game. We've got a flag, however, in the secondary. So we'll see what that's all about. Well, Duke gets a good play. Oh, Knight swells up. They can't afford to have a penalty now go against them and negate it. Here's Jim Knight. So there's the indication. Good ball. Personal foul on the offense. The Let's see here down. with Coles. Let's find out if we can get a hold of it. Okay, that's effort. He comes back. Ooh. 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 Yeah, that's Ooh. where the penalty took place. And, you know, it, that, that's tough. He's out there. He's blocking. He's throwing his body around. But, man, you know, you can do the same. You can be just as effective right in the guy's belt ball. That's right. Just as effective. Not down where. Yeah, that's down at the ankle. That gets where it gets kind of cheesy. From behind. You know, when fellas see that on film, you know, that just that doesn't go over well. Second down and 26 now. Florida State back up to the, the Duke 39. Pass is deflected. 
And I think that was Kevin Lewis. Mm -hmm. Kevin Lewis with a pass deflection. Lewis is having a great season for Duke. 28 tackles on the season coming in. And we talked about it today. He had to step up. Kendall Knight had to step up because Chris Combs, you knew what he'd do. He'd occupy people, but he also needed help. Third down and a bunch of yardage coming up here for Florida State. 26. They lead it, however, 24-0. Wenke has Coles and Warwick to the top side. Dugans to the bottom. And now whistles will slow down the play and negate it again. And do we have a timeout coming? Yes, timeout for Florida State, and they've used their last one. So we'll take the timeout as well with 8.49 and left to go in the first half. Florida State 24-0 back after these messages from your local ACC station. You know, our community has been working with one hand tied behind its back. Let's use both hands. People in the Big Bend are generous. About 55,000 hot meals were provided for children from low-income families last year. But we could be doing twice that much. Imagine if every business participated in the United Way campaign and every person gave. Imagine. Let's use both hands. The United Way. FAMU football had a breakthrough season in 98. This year, the Rattlers have some big opponents, but their goals are even bigger. Sunday night, following Eyewitness News at 11. Um, the toggle. Wants to build on last year's accomplishments and make a run for the ultimate prize, a Division I AA title. Celebrate the orange and green and watch the Billy Joe Show. Sunday night, following Eyewitness News at 11 on WCTV. The Thomasville Entertainment Foundation presents its 1999-2000 season of choice. This year's offerings include the Dale Warland Singers on October 14th. Triple play. Offensive line, goal line football. Get those rear ends up in the air. Bend your knees, flat back, short chop. Carter closes the series on March 30th. For tickets and information, call the Thomasville Entertainment Foundation at 912-226-7404. Put your trust in Eyewitness News. I'm Jeff Cunningham. And I'm Jamie Reese. When you turn to WCTV, you can depend on clear, concise reports. When news happens, we'll be there seven days a week. The news doesn't stop on the weekend, and neither do we. Join Jeff Cunningham and Jamie Reese, Mark Rushing with Eyewitness Sports, and Ed Muir with Dopper 6 Weather on Eyewitness News at 6 and 11, Weekend Edition. It's coverage you can count on. Florida State used their last time out here in the second quarter. They're up 24-0, 8.49 left to go until halftime. It's third down and 26. The ball is on the Duke 39-yard line. Florida State in this position because of a 15-yard personal foul penalty. Peter Warwick wide to the top side. Dugans to the bottom side. There's two wide receivers in the split backfield for Wink. Holmes with pressure. The pass is complete to Dugans at the... They're going to mark him out where? At the 20-yard line. He's still short of the first down. Well, Duke showed man. Then they dropped off, softened the look. Again, Winky has all day. Still, you know, it's just hard to stop it, especially in that type of coverage. You know, we haven't seen Duke blitz an awful lot today. Now they've tried to you know, some combo blitzes. They've tried to mix things up, but on the edge, I think the corners are going to have to take a few more chances in this game. Sebastian Janikowski who could probably spend some time in the defensive line. On to kick the field goal from 38 yards out, and the kick is good. His second of the afternoon, his first with a 46-yarder, and that increases the margin to 27. The Seminoles put another score on the board, 27 to nothing. An eight-play drive started at their own three-yard line after Duke went for it on fourth and goal from the three and didn't get it. Some key plays on the drive, a couple of passes to Dugans. Were important on that play on the drive. Travis Miner got him out of the hole with some key carries early. Florida State with all those weapons. Just keeps marching on. 27-0 here in the second. And they're marching. They march to a field goal twice now. That's right. Should have had a punt to the two punt. So if you do, you 
you can actually see encouragement. They're building on some things, but they're going to have to take more chances. Cross street scoreboard shows East Carolina with a heavier margin here on Army. At Mikey Stadium, and to surprise, Michigan having their way with Purdue today. Michigan's solid, but the Spartans. Whoa. 5 nothing over Iowa. And of course, Nebraska over Oklahoma State today. 21 to nothing here in the second quarter here. Our score, 27 nothing Florida State. Top ranked in the country, and uh, they've shown us a lot of reasons why. Janikowski on for the kickoff. Janikowski's either been out of bounds or out of the end zone. This is the latter. Won't be returned. Duke will pick it up at the 20 yard line. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South. You call the play feature a look at a big call from ACC Games Past. All that and more. Mike Hogwood is our halftime host. As you look into the offensive huddle here, Bobby Campbell talking things over with Carl Franks. And I know it's tough for Carl to come here and because he came here so many years with Florida. Fun and gun, baby. Oh, yeah. You know, there still is a holdover on the Duke staff from the Steve Spurrier era at Duke. That's Fred Chapman. He's been at Duke 14 years. First and 10, Duke from their own 20 yard line. Campbell back, the seven step drop. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Dwayne Epperson. Bobby Campbell passed three times today where Campbell has had, pre had, had time. Yeah. Throwing a ball that has been dropped. Or the play has not been made. Let's say that's even better. Play has not been made. They, you just, it's suicide. You just poured your own, you poured it in the cup when you could have kicked it over. Wilkes had the other drop. Second down. And 10. Now you dictated the pass. Four man rush for Florida State. Pass is deflected and now intercepted. It's picked off by Chris Hope, the sophomore from Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's his second interception yeah. of the season. Hey, you, you the man. You look downfield, you see your guy, you release, no pressure. Poorly thrown. Ball's a little high for Scotty. Tommy Polly deflected it, and Chris Hope from Rock Hill, South Carolina, picked it off. And Florida State's in business again in Duke territory at the 35. You never seem to get tip balls when they tip them. If you're, they're on offense, the ball ends up on the ground. You tip one, it goes in the air. When they're on defense, they come down with it. This is the third drive of the afternoon that started on Duke's side of the football field for Florida State. Here is Warwick, and he's back to pass. His second pass of the season, complete for a touchdown to Lavernius Coles. His first touchdown pass ever to Lavernius Coles. Bobby Bowden says we'd like to have a new wrinkle for Peter Warwick every week. There's your wrinkle. And he has enough highlights now <laughs> to make his way to, to the New York, the downtown athletic club, and just take it. I mean, <laughs> the guy has game. Janikowski on for the point after, after the 35-yard connection from Peter Warwick to Lavernius Coles. His first touchdown reception of the year. Here is Warwick. You have to thank Gadget following a turnover. Teams like to do some unusual maneuvers with Bobby Bowden and his group. Wow. Peter Warwick has scored three and thrown for one. It's 34-0 Seminole. We've heard your complaints about changing your oil filter, banging your knuckles trying to grip that slippery filter. That's why Fram, America's number one filter, now has Sure Grip, a rough textured top on our extra guard filter for easy gripping and installing. Only Fram has it. It makes changing your oil filter a lot easier. Fram oil filters. Pay a little more now or pay a lot later. Over the years, a lot of businesses have put their names on one line of trucks. The one that offers the most powerful V10. The one that was first to offer quad cab versatility. 
and the longest lasting full-size pickup on the road. We understand this name thing. We're pretty fussy about what we put ours on, too. Dodge Ram. Different. Out here, it seems the wind never stops blowing. Build and remodel homes here, and you soon learn what you can and can't trust. Contractor John Miranda trusts only one window, Anderson. Ask him to use anything other than Anderson, and he'll ask you to sign a release. So his reputation remains solid. Worryproof, timeproof. Anderson Windows. Available at Taylor's Window and Door Company, Tallahassee, and Taylor's Building Supply, East Point. Come on, girl, it's time to shake things up. Get a good guru, get out of this room. Talking woman to woman, friend to friend. We've come a mighty long way. Let's do it again. Changing for the better. Today's game is brought to you in part by Fram Extra Guard, the only filter with the rough textured Sure Grip Top. It makes changing your filter a lot easier. The Peter Warwick show rolls on. He's caught three touchdown passes and he's just thrown his first touchdown pass of the season and of his career. 35 yard hookup to Lavernius Coles, 34 to nothing. Florida State, they take advantage of the interception by Chris Hope and Peter Warwick says, I'll do the rest. And he did. Sebastian Janikowski is on to kick. This will be his seventh kickoff of the day. Two of them have been out of bounds, and the rest have been out of the end zone. Myrtle Jack is back. He said just once I'd like to bring one out. It won't be this time. It'll be first and ten out of the 20-yard line. Some little extra activities going on on the field, and to chronicle those and other things, here's Mike Hogwood. Well, some ACC news of the week. I think it's really safe to say that Georgia Tech quarterback Joe Hamilton and Peter Warwick, who's having an amazing game here today, are the leading candidates now for the Heisman Trophy. Also in our news, we have one ACC game already complete, played on Thursday night. Georgia Tech beat Maryland, but I think it's safe to say that Maryland and Wake Forest, the two surprises here early in this ACC season, we've got that game next week. High noon from... Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. Yes, we do. We're looking forward to that one. Hope you'll join us. Dog fight. It yeah, will be a good be a dog one. Fight. Two great running backs, Lamont Jordan and Morgan Kane. Duke first and ten at their own 20. Hand off goes to B.J. Hill. Flag is thrown in to boot. And leading the charge is going to be Octavius Jackson. Not a lot of room on that play. Let's see what the call is. Guys in the striped shirts have been pretty busy this afternoon. It's a hole. All right, now these two guys look like they want to go in and deal with that torture. You think so? I don't. <laughs> I think it's one of those weeks you can say, you know what, I think I'll be ready next week, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be ready next week. You know, Bobby hasn't done that bad a job. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. <laughs> he, hasn't. he hasn't done a bad job. And I'll and I tell you what, though. Um, if you're a player, you do want to play against them. You always want to play against the best. Well, you know, Duke came down to Tallahassee last year. And they thought they'd had their best team that they, they could put against the Seminoles in a long time. And they were up, in fact, early on. 7-3 wound up losing and to the tune of 62-10 uh, to 10 or something like that. And everybody came down with a stomach virus during the game. That's right. First and 20 from the 10 after the hole. Quick swing pass is over the head of Richmond Flowers. Got to give your receiver a chance. Yeah. You know, the play is set up. Florida State makes a living with that play. That, that's a ball that really needs to be right on the numbers so that as the, re the receiver makes the catch, he can run. And that's a that's a timing play, too. You saw how Maryland ran that Thursday night yep. against Georgia Tech. Yeah, very good. I thought Calvin called it an excellent job. Calvin has stepped in, man, and just been rolling. Yes, he has. Richmond Flowers is split wide out to the right side. Ben Ertle Jack to the left. Scotty Montgomery's in the slot to the right. On second down and 20. Here's Campbell. Campbell looking in the direction of Montgomery is complete and driven out of bounds there by Mario Edwards at the 18 yard line. And it's going to be a gain on the play of eight. 
I want you to watch Bobby Campbell this time. We, we've seen him going backwards. Now watch the footwork. Sets up, plants, throws. You know, if he can do that, he can give you those results. You can move the chains that way, but mm -hmm. you've got to stay out of those second and longs. Right now they're third and 13, down 34 nothing. Backed up to their own 17 yard line. Out of the shotgun, and it's an open backfield. Five wide receivers. Now Montgomery acts like a tight end and steps in next to the left tackle. We've got a flag down. It's a delay of game. Shock the uh, game clock has run out. Run the play or something to that effect out of the mouth of Carl yeah. Frank. And Scotty saying, hey, Coach, uh, I saw Octavius Jackson, the 255-pound freshman <laughs> with a ear hole shot on my buddy Bobby. So I tried to save him. All right, five wide outs again. Campbell back to throw, rushes on, passes behind Scotty Montgomery. Dirt and covering on the play. Now we showed you before when Bobby got a chance to set up and plant throw. Well, that last play was just the opposite of that. He had no time to do it. And I know this is a bit of a stretch, but you know when you, when you watch all Franks here, he's a part of that fun and gun with Spurrier, and they've tried to set some components up here. Boy, it takes a lot more work on a game. It takes you know. A couple more recruiting classes. Yes, it does. Morton, two yards deep in his end zone, and Reggie Durden is back to catch it. Durden falls for it at the 50. Steps ahead to the 45 of Duke and is brought down there. And the tackle is made by Dan Umbo. Dan Umbo has made a couple of special teams tackles. Okay, for the Duke Fred Harris, 16, did a real fine job as a release man of pressing to the ball. 39-yard punt by Brian Morton. Durden's six-yard return brings it back to the 45-yard line of Duke. When you play Florida State and you're a release man on punt coverage, you might as well be a running back or a receiver. Your role is that prominent. Yes, it is. Because you have got to stop. You better you, you got to get down there. And because it's either Warwick who can return it for a score, or Durden did a great job on the 37-yard return early on. And this is Travis Miner. Flag goes into the fray there at the 35-yard line. Penalty flag. And Gardner was out trying to help. Stallmeyer in on the tack. That um, that bounce. That was a Warwick Dunn bounce. Yes, you know? it was. You know we've spent a lot of time, and everybody spends a lot of time yeah. talking about Peter Warwick. But you, give, you 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 forget about Travis Miner. Holy by the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the oh, foul. Tom and Gardner, that's a good call, good yep. call. Anytime the hands are outside the numbers, then you are subject for that call. As an offensive guy, you want to keep it in the framework. It's an imaginary square right across the line of the numbers under, under the armpits. So it's first down and nine. It's marked off on the spot of the penalty. It's actually ahead of the chains. Ball backed up to the Duke 44 yard line. Florida State up 34 0. Winky. Going drop. Yeah, yep. going for it. All for it all here over the middle, and uh, it's for flag. Stringer. A flag is in on the play. Rain Stringer was the intended receiver. Lamar Grant in the area, along with Darius Clark. Grant knocked the ball down, but let's see if the call is against him. Now he's going for the trifecta. And it's against Duke. We'll see it again. In all fairness to any defensive back, if you got that kind of time, let's watch it. I thought everything was right until the offhand. You can't see the hand. See, look on the outside here. Let's watch this. Let's see if he grabs him right on the inside. You can't see it, but he can. Yep. See, he got a pretty good view of it. He can look right in there and see that. And he did. Got that backhand that you yeah. couldn't see. Couldn't see it, but you, you have to. The good ones tug a little bit. He didn't need to tug. All he had to do was go for the ball. But that call has been consistent yes, all afternoon. Oh, no, the, the, way group, it's the group has been consistent. They have. First and 10 at the 29. Play fake, end around. This is Gardner. Gardner turns the corner. Gardner has a first down, maybe more. Brought down by Eric Jones and Lamar Grant inside the Duke 10-yard line down to the 8. Tallman 
Gardner, his first run of the year. Exciting redshirt freshman from New Orleans. To the watch Brian Sprague. I'm going to see the tight end get a good block on this. This is Florida State. This is Bobby Bodden and Mark Rick at their absolute best because now they've got you. They keep you off balance and you put those outstanding athletes in open space and they make people miss. Jermaine Stringer for a guy. Oh, block. yeah. First and goal from the eight. Wanky. Throws. It's a dart to Kendra. Touchdown. Dan Kendra. A favorite in Tallahassee and playing well here in Jacksonville. That's his second pass reception for a touchdown this season. The former quarterback converted to a fullback has made it successfully. This is a good story. Because you like a kid who works hard, is able to overcome adversity, great concentration on the football. You know he's familiar with the end zone. And there he gives you. <laughs> Janikowski out of the hold of Marcus Otson, and the point after is good, making it 41 to nothing. There's Dan Kendra. He was injured in preseason prior to last year. He was supposed to be the quarterback of this team. That opened the door for Chris Wenke. And when Kendra came back fully recovered from the knee injury, they decided to move him over to fullback. Mark Rick says it takes about five games for a guy to adapt. Guess what? This is game number five. Yeah, and he's there. Yeah, he has. It's amazing how they have it now. Well, Bobby with a low five. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know he's having fun with it. Yes, he is. He still has a lot of fun at this game. He's still... And, and, and who couldn't have fun with the unit he's got out there? I mean, he has got, he feels, his deepest team with the exception of a quarterback. Doesn't yeah. feel he's that deep at quarterback yet as far as experience is concerned. But everybody else. Well, Otson, we know, has some time. And they, this Jared Jones is a young man they feel has a lot of potential. May see him yes, later indeed. on this afternoon. But this Dan Kendra, I mean, if you've ever been hurt as an athlete and you feel a bit, a bit ostracized from the team as a, well, just magnified as a quarterback a guy who's a team leader and now you're gone and plus the added bonus of a guy who knows every blocking assignment oh, yeah. knows where everybody's supposed to be and that's the thing that Mark Rick talks about is that what he gives you is that he has a great understanding and has a better grasp of the grasp of the things that he has to do in terms of picking up blitzes and stuff like that strong as ox yep Janikowski to kick it off again Look at how that just picks up air, and this will be returned. Richmond Flowers. Flowers heads to the outside and is brought down at the 15 yard line. Now let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood with a preview of what's coming up at halftime. Well, Steve, coming up at halftime, we're going to talk to both coaches about what they'll do in the second half. It'll be interesting to hear the comments of Florida State coach Bobby Bowden, as well as uh, Carl Flanks. We'll, we'll have our Domino's Play of the Week. And we'll also look back at our ACC Game of the Century, Florida State's National Championship big win over Nebraska. It's all coming up at halftime. Thank you very much, Mike Hogwood. That's Stanford Samuels made the tackle on Richmond Flowers, and that sets Duke up at their own 15-yard line. Bobby Campbell, that's Devin Pierce, and Dwayne Epperson is back here. There's three wide outs. This is Epperson. Nice block thrown by a center, Troy Andrew, gets him up to about the 20-yard line, and then it folds down in a hurry. Tackle made by Tommy Pollock. He's already had a pass deflection on the afternoon that resulted in an interception by Chris Holt. <laughs> Five fifteen and counting here in the first half. Forty-one nothing. Florida State Seminoles on Peter Warwick Day. It seems three touchdown receptions and he's thrown a touchdown pass. Campbell hands off to Epperson. He's hit from behind, but still struggles ahead to the twenty-two. Polly is in there. Bradley Jennings is also on the tackle. Wood. Abdul Howard. Wood. What's impressive? It's that Duke is continuing to play, as Mike Hogwood pointed out, their game plan. Now, this won't pay off today, but it'll pay off against Virginia and Georgia Tech and as the schedule progresses because these guys now, this is a difficult situation, and they are competing. Yep, and they're moving the ball on the ground, which is what they need to try to do. They better set up what they want to accomplish with their airborne attack. It's third down and four. Pass to the flats for Montgomery is thrown too tall. Chris Hope is covering on the play. 
Yeah, it's the kind of play you have to go after. They're going to give it to you, but you have to win. And sometimes you got to take that outside position and cut it in. Cut it in, you know, and just improvise. It's just that way you have to. Somebody's got to make a play. Speaking of making a play, Peter Warwick is in punt for me. Brian Morton is there to kick. We'll look at it from behind Morton's back. Reggie Dirt. Uh-oh. Coming in. Wow. He got away with it. And he tries to kick it away from Warwick. He'll pick it up on the bounce and ran out of bounds. So the impetus of the catch takes him out at the 41-yard line. It's a 41-yard kick for Brian Morton. And not much a return for Peter Warwick. 41, first and 10 at No, he didn't plan that one. No. Florida State uh, next week settles a little interstate rivalry with Miami. And then they have Wake Forest. And that could be a tough game. And then, of course, the game that everybody's been kind of looking at on October 23rd when Bobby Bowden faces son Tommy Bowden at Death Valley. And Tommy Bowden might have a surprise or two for him. That's a Clemson football program that is uh, headed in the right direction. And Virginia, Maryland, and the season ended with Florida. First and 10 at the 41. Whoa, uh -oh. a knock him back oh, oh, tackle by Darius Clark on the ball carrier that time. And that is going to be Nick Maddox carrying the football. He's changed his uniform number back to 20. They like Nick. But Nick, Nick doesn't like that one. That no. was a lick by Darius. Two freshman out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, and rated as the top running back in the country last year in high school football. The pass to Ron Dugans. Another flag thrown in. Lamar Grant is in the area, and he may be called once again. And Lamar is in great position. And he's going to have to just avoid all contact and go for the ball. That call's been there all day. Let's see it. Get it. By the big man. Top of the action. Now, at this point, he's got to see it. He's got to break on the ball. See, he glides in at the ball. See the arm right yep, there? That's yep. what got him. That's what got him. And at this point now, you know, Bob Trot, you got to pull this kid over. He hadn't played a lot for you this year. He's been practicing and talk to him. He's too good an athlete to let this happen repeatedly. 15 more yards on the penalty to the Duke 45. Wenke back to throw. Steps up, fires, pass is complete. And it's Minnis, Marvin Minnis, down to the 28 yard line. It's a completion of about 17 yards. LeVar Johnson back up inside linebacker, making the tackle. Boy, that's a nice route. You talk about stop on a dime. Minnis already has the crowd with a chanting a little bit about it. Broke a bone in his foot in preseason. 17-yard reception. Missed the first two games, first three games of the season. Played against NC State. Here's Wenke to throw. It is complete. And this looks like it's Dugan's. And good for a first down. They'll mark him down at the 16-yard line of Duke. On the tackle is going to be Charles Porter. This is what you don't have an answer for. Florida State knocking rotate people who are fresh, who are chomping at the bit to play and to show their skills. And you as a defender, you've been on the, on the field now the whole half. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Here's Wenke to throw. Wenke to the corner. Dugans potted out of the end zone. There's a flag on the play. This may be interference against Florida State. There's a second flag going down as he went over the pylon. And that might have been verbal. I, I, as I followed Dugans into the corner of the end zone or into the corner inside the one, it looked like he pushed first. The question is, what, what, what was seen? What was the second flag about? During the play, we have two fouls, one by either team. We have an offensive interference. We have then a defensive interference. Those penalties offset. <laughs> Boy, Jim's had to explain a lot to us here in the first half. He's got offsetting penalties there. Let's see this one. Again, we get the isolation. There they run a bit of a bracket on that. Now, yeah, that's offense. Yeah. I didn't, but then I didn't they got him. It. They got Lamar for a push after. There was still time with the ball in the air. <laughs> All right, first down over again. Wanky. Hands off. This is Davey Ford. 
We've seen four running backs for Florida State. And Davey Ford carries it down to the 12 yard line with 2.30 remaining in the first and Mike Steinbach in on the tackle for Duke. It's a gain of about four. Approaching the two minute mark and Florida State up here 41 to nothing. Peter Warren caught three touchdown passes, thrown for another two to Sebastian Janikowski field goals. Here's Davey Ford, and Darius Clark pulls him down. Davey and they'll mark the ball ahead to the nine yard line. Darius Clark makes the stop. Step on the three on the play. Carl Franks is kind of thinking what he wants to tell his team at halftime. He's got a lot to tell his team as far as the positive aspects of what they've done. They've moved the ball. They've not taken care of opportunities. They've given Florida State too many opportunities. Yeah, they're tested. But, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, yeah. there are times you end up in a situation. The key is, what do you do about it? Dugan just split out. Winky's looking at him. Pops once, pops again. And the pass is knocked down by Brian McCormick. Great play by McCormick. McCormick at the mouth of the end zone. And that's what you do about it. You go out and you compete. Now, unfortunately for Duke, when you get that close, you have to convert because you may not get another chance. The slant's on, defense is just the right call for it. He tried to pump, wasn't there, and that's a great play. That's a perfect tip. He couldn't have got That was a very difficult catch for a linebacker, but that's a super effort. He's a senior from Shalimar, Florida. There are 13 players on the Duke roster in the state of Florida. So they had some ticket requesting. Sebastian Janikowski on to attempt his third field goal of the afternoon. This is a 27 yard. Out of the hole of outs from the left hash, and it is good. So Janikowski with a hat trick, and Florida State pushes their lead to 44. 44 to nothing with 122 left to go here in this first half. Jacksonville. Sunny day in our first weekend in October and a warm one too in the mid 80s. The Seminole fans, this is technically a road yeah, game for them. Yeah, yeah they're treat. into it. It's a treat for them. We saw a lot of them at our hotel last night in Jacksonville. And this is all part of a festival the city of Jacksonville is uh, putting on called the River Raid. And the river, of course, they refer to the St. John's River that meanders through the city of Jacksonville and uh, defines its character. No, it's, a, it's a great little weekend. Yeah, it is. We tried to do our part last night. Yes, we did. Get a flavor. I think we were successful. Well, you know, it's, you got to give back. <laughs> yes, we did. We helped the local economy. Yeah. And, uh, Duke fan plotting his escape in the stadium at halftime. Janikowski getting set to kick it away. We've seen a lot of this in the first half. Florida State 44, Duke nothing. Florida, Florida State, of course, number one in the country. Looking for a second national championship in the 90s. Mike Hogwood will chronicle their most recent national championship at halftime. Little Jack says, what the heck? Down it, and we'll go to the 20. A minute 22 left to go. What a weapon Janikowski can be. Well, he negates a weapon, huh? You know, he negates, if you have a return guy, and he takes it away for you. Oh, Bobby's getting into that, that low five. Yeah. <laughs> Janikowski, all ACC, and the Lou Groza Award winner last year. Manny beat out across the field from him. Sims Lenhart hasn't been able to get into action today. He's a heck of a weapon. Yes, he is. First and 10, Duke from their own 20. Campbell still under center, and a handoff now goes to B.J. Hill. Twists, he turns, does little else. Right down on the play by uh, Davis Jackson. Jerry Johnson in on the tackle. And Tony Bedford, freshman from Denver, Colorado, making his presence felt in that play. Bobby Bowden certainly keeping to that promise to run a lot of players in and he's used just about everybody who's suited up and traveled today. He's got Bedford in there at left defensive tackle. Duke now has 77 John Miller in. Oh, Miller has got a mean streak. He's sitting there rumbling. Second down and 10. Play fake. Campbell over the middle. Sells it well and hits Richmond Flowers. And Flowers is out to the 40-yard line. A gain of 20 on the play. Sean Key 
Picks him up and put him down. Sean Keane and Brian Allen make the stop. So nice gain on the play of 20. 34 seconds left to go in the first half. Duke trying to break that goose egg on the scoreboard. Take something positive into the locker Three wide receivers, but here comes B.J. Hill, and Hill, quick opener off left tackle. Brought down there by Gibson and Rhodes. And also Woods, it's a gain of two. Brings up second down and eight, and looks like Duke is gonna call timeout. We're very close to it here, With 14 seconds left. They have called a timeout. Stop the clock. And see if Campbell can get them into some sort of field position here. Well, you, you, know, it's, you don't want to give the ball up, but you do want to try to push it downfield. And Florida State's Benford is in the neutral zone, steps across. Let's see if he was drawn. John Miller was the Duke offensive lineman involved. It's going to be offsides against. Fractured by the defense, five yards. So, March five yards upfield. Up to the 45, and three seconds left to go, and Campbell can air it out, see if he can find somebody down there. He's got Montgomery, Flowers wide out. They do it out of the shotgun. Dupree is the tight end from the up position. Campbell. With time, down the middle of the field for Flowers, nearly picked off by Gibson. A bang-bang play right there by Derek Gibson to end the half and break up the pass intended for Richmond Flowers. The first half goes pretty much as people expected it to. The Peter Warwick Show. Three touchdown receptions, one touchdown pass, three Sebastian Janikowski field goals, and it's Florida State. 44 to nothing over Duke. Let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood has Bobby Bowden. Uh, Coach, that's a pretty impressive first half. Well, it is. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a home game to us. It's kind of uh, disadvantageous to Duke. Got a good hot day. Everything's in our favor. What do you tell your guys now at halftime when you're up 44 zip? Well, we'll play our second team offense the second half and then intermingle our defense and try to play football. I don't, you know, you hate to say don't go out and play hard. But we'll, we'll, we'll liberally substitute. All right, that's Bobby Bowden headed to the locker room. And as you heard him say, his second team ready to go in the second half. Our halftime activities are on the way here from Altel Stadium in Jacksonville in just a moment. ACC football is being brought to you by BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. By Bell Self, the official telecommunications company of the ACC. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. By Domino's Heat Wave, fresh, hot, and delicious Domino's pizza, how you like it. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Bell Self Mobility DCS, offering you great value on all digital wireless service with phones by Nokia. By KFC. KFC has five new delicious chicken sandwiches. Try the tender roast now for only $1.99. At KFC, we do chicken right. And by Dodge. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. It's time to face the facts, ma'am. That battery is passed on to a better place. At Advance Auto Parts, it's our job to help this woman find a new battery at a great price. And if she can get down here, we'll install it for her free of charge. For this is the role we play in the automotive circle of life. Folks, are you still buying chicken sandwiches from those burger boys? Why? Some of them boys grill their chicken dry as an old shoe. Tender roast sandwich is deep marinated so it's full of flavor. Slow roasted so it's tender and juicy. Try my new tender roast sandwich. Right now it's just $1.99. $1.99? I could do that. I'm the curtain. 
At KFC, we do chicken right. In the bucket and now on a bun. Jim Walter has a lot of different homes to choose from. We had our property, so the financing was easy. We sat down with them, told them what we could afford, and about a week later, we got financed. Four months later, we moved in, and two months after that, we made our first house payment. They make it easy for young families that are starting out to have some kind of future. Our kids are going to have a place to come home to when they're older, you know, and see grandma and grandpa and bring their children. For nearly 50 years, the Atlantic Coast Conference has excelled both on and off the field. Our corporate partners have helped sustain this tradition of excellence through their financial support of our student-athletes and a variety of community outreach programs. We're proud that our corporate partners have joined with the Atlantic Coast Conference in this important effort. The ACC Player of the Week is presented by Buick and your local Buick dealers. This week, the honor goes to Thomas Jones of Virginia. The senior tailback ran for a career high, 210 yards on 35 carries. He scored two touchdowns in a 45-40 Cavalier win on the road at number 17 Brigham Young. Jones leads the ACC and is fifth nationally in rushing. 